had the shortest skirt. You're watching a scene from the last film in which Julia Roberts had the leading role two and a half years ago. The movie was Dying Young, and for a while it seemed the perfect metaphor for her career. Her story had a fairy tale spin from the start. The pretty girl from Smyrna, Georgia, who became the pretty woman of Hollywood. Two Oscar nominations, a Golden Globe, the most bankable actress in town after only a handful of movies. In role after role, she walked the line between hot and wholesome, and as a result, became the perfect icon for the safe sex generation. Every studio had a dozen projects with her name on them. She could write her own ticket, and she did. A one-way ticket out of the limelight. Julia pulled a gobbo and disappeared. But why? Was Pretty Woman fun to make? Oh, I mean, yeah. It looks like it was fun. Oh, it was... Certainly I didn't spot the trouble. I'd interviewed her at length only a few months before. She was then all but engaged to keep a Sutherland. And life was good. I thought. Shortly before the wedding, she, he, somebody called it off. Then it was all downhill. In her next role, a small part in Hook, there were reports that Julia's personal crisis took its toll on the set, prompting an unflattering quote about her from director Steven Spielberg. The press painted rumors of drug abuse. A fragile country girl who hitched a ride on the celluloid comet and then burned out on fame and broken romance. In the middle of this publicity nightmare, she agreed to spoof herself in a cameo role in The Player, Robert Altman's stinging indictment of Hollywood. On the same set was an amateur actor and professional musician, Lyle Lovett. Paul, why have you brought Mr. Miller in here today? To look at some pictures. Oh, my friends told me she was too young. The shy country star got up the nerve to call the reclusive movie star. And a short time later, in a very sudden and very private ceremony, they were married. For once, the press didn't have the inside story. Most people didn't even know they knew each other. Thank you, Alan. Have a good weekend. And now she begins again. Her first starring role in two and a half years will be a taut legal thriller. Famed director Alan Pakula's The Pelican Brief based on John Grisham's bestseller. The film co-stars Denzel Washington, her own choice for leading man. I told him I was your sister Mary in from out of town and couldn't find you. How'd you know how to sister Mary? You're not the only one that does research. The Julia I sat down with this time was different. She's no longer the new kid on the block, and I think she likes that. On screen, she is famous for projecting a sort of innocent vulnerability. Nice in person, you. you see the confidence. Julia, tell me about the last two years. I mean, there you were, uh, making film after film, and then you said, that's it, and you stopped and walked away. That's hard for people to do. There were lots of stories. Why did you walk away? <clears throat> well, it's not, it's, it, it wasn't as conscious a sort of, that's it, I'm done mm -hmm. kind of thing. It was more... Um, just something that was quite normal, which was I finished a movie and I had been working quite a lot and I was tired and sort of, you know, done, going to take a break. And, uh, and then just didn't, didn't come back, didn't find anything that was appealing enough to come back. And I was, I was at times enjoying just my day-to-day -day life so much. Um, that what did was you do? Nothing spectacular. And having worked so much for, for, a few years it, it took me like almost a year and a half to to realize hey i can make every minute exactly what i want to be but you know what everybody said and what all the papers said uh, burnt out exhausted uh, uh, um, broken romance running away i mean you read it all i read it all you must have read it all mm -hmm. what you feel it makes you curious it makes you uh just as a as a person stop and say wh why isn't the truth interesting enough what I do is give to people. I make a movie, I'm saying this is my blood, sweat, tears, guts, joy, sorrow, everything, the whole ball of wax. I worked on it as hard as I could and it is for you. It is for everybody. Everybody gets it. I give it to everybody. Nobody's excluded. And that's not enough. Well, that's all I have to give. 
I don't know if it's show business or, or, or movies, but there's sort of this strange idea that everybody has to keep moving. Mm -hmm. Pe writers have to keep writing. Actors have to keep acting. Everything has to keep going. And if you don't, there's something wrong. And if you yeah. stop, yeah. you know, um, I said to a friend the other day, we were talking about this exact thing, and I said, you know, it's sort of like when you have a car that doesn't work great. Once you get it started, you leave it running. Because if you turn it off, it might not start again. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the sort of strange fear that people think. And here I was, you know, with a bad car, and I turned it off and figured, hey, if it starts up again, great. If it doesn't, guess what? I'll get another car. What was the bad car you turned off? I think it was, I think my bad car was, was buying into that, uh, that unconscious, I should keep working, you know, and realizing that, that, I, don't, that I don't have to keep working. Let's talk about something wonderfully happy, okay? Let's talk about that last June. You up and got married yeah. to Laura Lovett. Everybody said, what? How? Start from the beginning. Um, well, he's just great, you know? Um, and, and, and I, I, you know, he's so great. I just, yeah. Where do you start? Well, we, we, um... Start with how you met. We met. We had, um, mutual friends in common. And, and he came to, um, to, to see me and, um, and was very nice. And I had a very, um, strong reaction to meeting him. Different from the way you'd been with other men? Different from the way I've ever reacted to any person on the planet. What does he have that you hadn't seen before? He's, um, he's just, he's perfect. Just when I get used to some great thing that I've discovered, I find another great thing and another great way about him. And, um, I feel like I'm gushing. That's okay. So, but yeah, he's, 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 he's the perfect Lyle. Do you like his hair? I do like his hair, but you know, the thing is, I think that if you spend any time with him, his hair's not as big as everybody makes it out to be. And I think that whenever people write about his hair, they always find the picture where his hair is the biggest. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've seen pictures from years ago, and I said, honey, wow, that's high, you know. But it's not, a, it's not really, it's pretty normal. <laughs> pretty normal, but not absolutely normal. Well, what's normal, I mean, yeah. you know. But it's, it's I, yeah, he's really good looking. So in this recent magazine uh, interview with you in Vanity Fair, it quotes you as saying that you fell in love with him because he looked like, uh, Abraham Lincoln. That's not exactly what you said. That's, well, it's not what I said. No. I don't, it never occurred to me that he looked like Abraham Lincoln. I don't, I think he looks like Lyle to me. What I had said was I had made the fatal mistake of saying how when I was a child that I had a crush on Abraham Lincoln. Why I would choose to reveal this, I know not. So, weeks later, I've now gotten married because I did the interview when I was a single girl. And he calls me back the reporter. Some, he yep. says, let me ask you something. He said, when you were talking to me before about Abraham Lincoln, you described him as stoic, regal, and with a real gentleness. Don't you think those same words you could be describing Lyle? And I said, stoic, regal, gentle. I said, yeah, that would describe Lyle. So it was the words didn't, it had nothing to do with Abraham Lincoln. That's the whole <laughs> thing, you know? So now there's like these cartoons with, you know, my poor husband, who, thank God, he's patient as a saint with, like, a beard and a stovepipe hat on. And it's so stupid, you know? It's so embarrassing, though, because it looks like I said it, and it's such a dopey thing to say. Then you got married so quickly. Mm -hmm. Bam! Why so fast? Well, we were, we were going to get married um, later, like this, like now or something. And, and I was sitting in my kitchen... Um, in D.C. where I was working, and suddenly I started thinking about it, and I could sort of picture the months going by, and I could sort of picture the wolves coming in closer, and I got panicked. The wolves? Well, just sort of, you know, the press and, you know, people that would dig around in trash and stuff like that, those kind of wolves. And it just, it just seemed like the smartest way to do it so that it could be ours as opposed to everybody's. Can we see the ring, the wedding ring, and the get yeah. Now, did Lyle pick those? Or did you pick he, he, he picked these out for me, and um, they're beautiful. Julia, why was this so right, and the marriage to Kiefer Sutherland so wrong? 
Um, you make it sound like we were married. <laughs> no, excuse me. You were going to get married. No, you're going to get married, and you, and you broke it off. And as a matter of fact, yes. you said at some point that you felt that breaking it off saved your life. Well, I think it saved both our lives. I mean, quite obviously. Um, I mean, I've read that I left him a week before, days before, hours before. He was standing there waiting for me. I didn't show up. So what was it? It was that we realized in what was unfortunately a close amount of time to, to getting married, but not, you know, days or hours, that it wasn't right. And Kiefer, in a different way, reached the same conclusion as I did at the same time. What I felt, especially for both of us, because we were kids, you know, just little babies trying to work something out, that, that we dealt with it really well together in a room with, without anybody else around. Can you keep, I mean, when you were upset personally, could you keep it out of the professional life? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, that's, that's easy. Even though we read with Steven Spielberg when you went in to do Hook that he felt that the Steven two... Spielberg, I, I find quite confused in his recollection of me. So clear it up. Um, I never had a moment's trouble, sorrow, reflection, anything on the set of Hook. There's no doubt in my mind. And he talked more about his personal life. I know more about, you know, him and his life and, and you know, Amy Irving and what have you than I probably said about, about my own life, you know. But even that was quite conversational. And that wasn't sort of like saying, oh, my God, you're never going to... It was just so I find it... Um, I find him to be, uh, unfortunately, not, not, as, not as good at remembering the time that we spent together as, uh, as I am. Do you have a philosophy? Um, gosh, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm spilling my guts, but I'm not going to tell you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sort of have a couple. I mean, I think one is um, cover your tracks and accentuate the positive. I think that's a, that's a good way to, to go about things. I mean, you don't have to be out and out happy, but at least feel good about what you did in the day or... or um, you know, who was involved in your day, and, and Lyle is a great inspirer of that. You don't have to spill any more guts, we're finished. <laughs>